I used to rely on the relaxer because natural hair scared me, and I always thought it was considered ugly. Then I had a daughter who began to question her natural hair and why she couldn't have a relaxer. I did a big chop and fell in love with my beautiful natural texture. I regret the years I believed the lie that my curls were somehow less beautiful. Like some black women, this respondent has had an apprehensive relationship with her natural hair. In fact, based on my own research, five other people struggled with relaxers and hiding their natural hair. However, even though this particular respondent started off with a negative relationship with her hair, it evolved into a healthy, beautiful relationship. And this is reflected with the majority of my respondents, with them having a clear and positive view of their natural hair. The phrase is, I have learned what works, I have a good relationship with my hair now, and I love my natural hair, were stated by some of my respondents. As you can see, two extremes are represented from just one question. On one side, hate. In the other, love. Agreements and disagreements in opinion are common in every aspect in life, from important aspects like politics and religion to more trivial ones like what to have for dinner or what to wear to school. I wanted to highlight these differences in opinions with my research about black hair. I conducted my own research in the form of a survey to really understand what people who are close to me think about their hair. I'm conducting my own research because I want to know if and how European ideals of beauty had infiltrated black people's own ideas of beauty in regard to the hair. I pose these questions to challenge the European ideal of beauty, which is defined as pale skin and fine hair. The history behind my research was divided into two distinct topics, European influences and colorism. In parts of Africa, long, thick hair gained admiration and represented power. Scarves and head wraps were consequently uncommon. However, slavery caused a dramatic shift in those ideals, as brutal conditions and lack of value of time, which was usually dedicated to hair, were imposed upon black people. This departure from elaborate hairstyles and maintenance left slaves with matted, dirty hair, which was subsequently Colorism covered. Colorism was very prevalent during slavery. Colorism is the discrimination between the same race based on the darkness of one's skin color. Due to the rise of lighter-skinned black people, this caused a slight shift in the dynamics between them and white people, meaning the lighter your complexion, as a black person, the better treatment you received. With many worldwide views constantly changing, the perceptions of black hair are now shifted to more recent acceptances such as the natural hair movement. Other well-known examples are documentaries like Good Hair, short films like Hair Love, and children's books like Happy to be Nappy. With this shift towards embracing natural hair, I was able to see if my own analysis showed this trend of acceptance among my survey participants. A total of 43 people participated in my survey, 95% identified as black, with 5% identifying as multiracial. When asked to describe their natural hair texture, 3 said soft, 5 said thin, 6 described their hair as coarse, 9 described their hair as thick, and 8 said curly. Some things that stood out to me in my data had to do with the younger generations, ages 18 to 25, having overall contrasting views with the older generations, ages 26 and older. For example, 89% of younger generations agreed with Poe's statements like, I have to explain myself when I wear my hair in this natural state, and natural hair makes people uncomfortable. However, 64% of people 26 and older disagreed. I found it interesting that the 26 to 30 and 40 to older age groups either have never experienced this question or action or have never been uncomfortable in this situation, while in the middle of these age groups, 31 to 40, the majority of those participants had experienced it. Another question that I asked was for the participants to describe what good hair meant to them. 56% stated that good hair had to do with how well the hair was taken care of or how healthy the hair was. The European standard of texture and race as an importance to good hair was also seen in the data. One respondent stated that good hair meant you are mixed with another race and your hair doesn't need a lot of doing anything to it. This response stood out to me because of the close similarity to the already worldwide established standard of good hair, which is fine and straight hair. Going back to that respondent, another respondent actually had conflicting views and states, something that I hate is when people see that I have long hair and immediately ask what I'm mixed with or immediately deny that it could be real. Additionally, at least four respondents stated that good hair applied to how they felt rather than how they took care of their hair. For example, one respondent feels that she has good hair if it makes her happy, another has good hair when she can be herself, and the last feels she has good hair when she looks good. 
I thought these responses were very important because they are examples of self-expression and actually relate perfectly to my own post challenge to the European ideals of beauty. Not only have these respondents rejected this standard, but they have also created their own. Also, my surveys show that while some outliers were present, the women in my research do not rely on the racist European standard to form their opinions. While some did not have as clear of a good relationship with their hair, this should not mislead people into thinking that all hair experiences are negative and tumultuous. Rather, a lot of my participants, 70%, had a clear understanding of the worth and beauty of their hair, which was decided based on their own experiences and evolution of their own relationship with their hair. Some even formed their own standards of beauty. Therefore, my research accomplished its purpose in challenging European ideals of beauty. This group of people are very good examples of how centuries of history and oppression has turned into victory pro self-expression and pride in something as beautiful and dynamic as black hair.